Une des grandes questions qui se pose à l'échelle de la planète, c'est celle de la relation entre la population, l'environnement et le développement. Les connexions peuvent être montrées comme un triangle, un triangle d'interaction entre la population et l'environnement, ou l'interaction entre l'environnement et le développement, et l'interaction entre la population et le développement. Before we go any further, I would like to come back on the notions, okay, population, we talk about populations all the time, but what is a population? It's a matter of headcount, a number of people, more than a billion inhabitants in China or India. It's also based on a growth rate, breakdown of the population in various areas, so numerous variants are to be considered. The environment is uh, a living environment where species live, it's nature if nature remains nature. And finally, an environment can also be humanized, the most humanized environment being the urban one. Development can be economic growth per capita or indicators of economic growth per capita, living standards and well-being. Several elements, therefore, which are fairly complex, and we also need to take into consideration what used to be called technical progress and is now referred to as technology, which changes the interaction between the various elements. Why do we look into this matter? Because in the history of the human population, an acceleration was observed in the uh, growth curve. It took thousands of years for planet Earth to be inhabited by one billion inhabitants, then another 125 years to uh, achieve two billion, and finally a few decades to reach the third billion. The world population increases faster and faster. People started talking about exponential growth, and the idea was that uh, population growth would never stop. Now, another factor must be taken into consideration. The economic growth per capita, or rather the consumption per rate per capita, also increased very quickly. The uh, demographic increase uh, went hand in hand with the consumption rate increase. This added pressure on the environment and posed a number of uh, serious issues regarding development. When studying the population, we must consider that there are also um, problems of inertia. The demographic, gro demographic growth is often shown as a uh, big, heavy boat which cannot change route very quickly and will continue uh, sailing uh, in the same direction without stopping. This is demographic growth and it's inertia. But we also need to consider contrasting uh, assumptions. If nothing changes, the population in 2100 will be about 30 billion inhabitants if nothing is done. Now, if uh, we take an average assumption, approximately two children per woman, in 2100 uh, there would be approximately 11 billion inhabitants on Earth very different growth scenarios. But bear in mind that these elements uh, interact with each other in several ways. People very often refer to as the IPAT, to refer to the IPAT equation, the environmental equation. I is the impact on the environment, P stands for population, A is affluence, it's the British word, and uh, T, technology, so affluence is the consumption level per capita. These elements com are combined with each other. If uh, population growth is, is high, then impact will also be high. If uh, per capita consumption is high, then P will also be extremely high. Or impact, sorry, will be high. Technology is different because technology sometimes improves the situation. 
think about processes uh, which are more environmental friendly, but in some cases technology can also make things worse. Worse, if we produce more CO2 for one kilometer of uh, transport. This equation has helped structure the discussion, the idea being to find the most important factor in the dynamic uh, processes. Some people believe it is the population and its growth. For other people, the uh, per capita consumption rate is the most important factor. But bear in mind that here we're talking about multiplication. For instance, in, an increased uh, per capita consumption rate will have a multiplicative effect on uh, a multiplying effect on the population. Here we can also show the same graph uh, in the form of a curve, the bottom uh, line being the situation when the population doesn't vary. And we would have uh, approximately 7 billion inhabitants uh, in 2030. But if we take the A curve, or if we increase the A rate, there would be consequences uh, increasing demographic growth or limiting demographic growth. I'll explain. If you take the bottom line, so a constant population growth, if per capita consumption increases, the curve will grow, will, will be steep. There will be no demographic effect. But the uh, per capita consumption uh, effect will be a pure affluence effect. Now, if we have a population increase combined with a per capita consumption rate, then the value is even higher. If in order to increase population, we improve, we, we increase the per capita rate, then there will be a compensating effect over the demographic increase. So it's very difficult to separate uh, the effects from each other. They can't be taken separately. People behave in a certain way, consume at a certain pace, and the questions cannot be taken separately. And this is precisely the reason why, in my introduction, I was talking about the triangle, population, environment, development. Depending on how we think about development, the interactions will change. Development will exert more or less pressure on the environment, and demographic growth or the limitation thereof could be achieved with less, more or less development. These relationships must be refined and observed either on the global level, on the world level, but also on the local level, provided we uh, discriminate between the uh, scales when we look at the matter.